Okay. When you take Einstein's general theory of relativity, the okay. modern theory of gravity, correct, gives us our understanding of the Big Bang right. and, the, and all this, all the modern cosmology. Then you have quantum physics, okay, which came out interestingly ten years after general relativity. This is in, now in the 1920s. Quantum physics is all about molecules and atoms and nuclei and mm. particles. Mm -hmm. Okay, those two theories do not play nicely with each other in the sandbox. Okay. They each work in their own regimes, but you try to bring them together, they are inconsistent with each other. Worlds colliding, Worlds Jerry. Worlds colliding. It is yeah. figuratively that. <laughs> right. All right, so now, what happens at the beginning of the universe when the entire universe was the size of an atom? Whose rules are in charge? Whoa. You have a shotgun Sharp, wedding. There you go. Between <sighs> quantum physics and general relativity. And Oh my God. And all of us are pretty sure that quantum physics wins. And in so doing, Quantum physics, where it pops particles in and out of existence, mm -hmm. it could pop universes in and out of existence. Was, Whole universes, if the universe is the size of a particle. Absolutely. So, the point is, let's go back in time when the whole universe was the size of a particle. What are the rules of quantum physics telling us? They're telling us that multiple universes could be popping in and out of existence. And we are just one of them. Gotcha. Each one with a slightly different law of physics. Okay. So. There's no limit on how many of these universes there could be. Right. Let's say there's infinite. Okay. If there's an infinite, that means there's every possible combination of all particles there ever were. Right. Including combinations of particles with you, you on another universe, on a podcast, where you have an evil mustache. Well, you already have a mustache. I already have an you evil, have evil mustache. goatee. Well, you no, already, I already have an evil goatee. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. There's the nice Chuck. Right. I was going to say. Clean shaven, clean shaven Chuck. Nice Chuck right. exactly. in the other universe. Right. And he's still a virgin, by the way. Mm. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> So they, people like thinking about this as a means of immortality. True. However, why would this Chuck, with all your atoms in this way, mm -hmm. have any consciousness overlap with the Chuck in the other universe? None. There would I, there's be. no reason there's to no be. There's no reason. I, for me to think so, because... That Chuck's living his own best life. Living his own best life. Right. You don't have overlapping consciousness with your twin. No. Nope. And they're in the same damn universe as you. And and, and, and you if they're identical, them. they came from the exact same single cell. Single cell. Right. So if you don't share consciousness. Right. With your twin, I'm not given reason to think you would share consciousness with somebody else who has the same molecular DNA construct as you, but in another but in another universe. year. Right. There you go. That's my So there you have it. So yeah. yeah. I, I mean, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. You know, that makes perfect sense. To even ask what was around before the Big Bang, mm -hmm. we'd be like asking, what is north of the North Pole? Uh, what is north of the North Pole? The question has no meaning. There you go. Okay, so let me get this straight. Yeah. This singularity happens. Boom. A second later, everything else that is, is yes. inside yes. of that. Yes. So time and space, all of that is inside of this thing that now is in existence. Yes. So that would mean oh that my, if oh. space is nothing. Oh, my head is hurting right now because well, I'm trying to think if you, about what is If you want space to be nothing, yes. you need a word to describe where there is no space. Wow, dude. We should call that nothing. And we should call what we have something. Like it's something that's nothing. Yes. Ooh, Chuck invents a word. There you go. Because, something. Because really nothing is what we're talking about. That's really what we're that's talking really about. That's really what we're talking about is nothing. But now we want to talk about something, something that, that is, is nothing. nothing. That Ooh. should be something. Ooh, Chuck. Nice. What is around that singularity? It's embedded in a higher dimension. Right. It's like if you're an ant crawling inside this sheet of paper and that's your world, you have no concept of what's above or below it, even right. though we do, because we we're higher Because you can lift the paper up and see underneath the paper. I can see what's on While the ant is still on the paper. Still on, inside but the paper. But that ant can never see underneath that paper. Oh, he can't, can't see. No, no. The ant is in the paper. Right. That's what I'm saying. No, it's in the paper. In the paper. He can so can't see, see above, above or below. Or below. Or he correct. can never see what's underneath it. Correct. That's crazy. So basically what we're talking about, this nothing is really only resident in a higher dimension at the time when the singularity Now the higher dimension is, people might say it's embedded in this thing that they call something. Right. Even though if it's nothing to us. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Life is made of what we call organic ingredients. Correct. Those elements weren't around at the Big Bang. Ooh. They were manufactured in the cores of stars. Nice. Of a kind of star that happens to then re-release it out into space. Sweet. So you have to stockpile generations of these supernova explosions 
that have made these elements and enriched the galaxy. You have to stockpile generations of them so that a later gas cloud right. doesn't only have the hydrogen and helium it was endowed with at the Big Bang, it's got these extra contaminant enrichments. <laughs> and out of those enrichments, the next generation of star systems will have the ingredients that can make planets and people. That is really very... And that, life in general. I wish that that was common knowledge, that what you just said right there is so important in terms of an origin story. Yes. It's so important. It's our origin story. It's our origin story. Origin story of life. Yeah. Right. Wow. Hey, man, that's a great question. That's but, why if, you, if you're looking at very, very old stars right. in the galaxy, uh -huh. it's pointless to try to find planets with life on them. We, we think. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. 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 Five billion years from now, where right. even more generations of stars have exactly. emerged, could those star systems have so much organic material mm -hmm. that they'd be teeming, teeming with, with life? Like, like life they, on Earth it has only one genesis, as right. far as we know. Yeah. Maybe they're planets with multiple genes, genesis yeah. of life. Like, like they can't, like they're just tripping over life. Tripping over life. Because there's so much, so as, much material there to we, make life. So much material to make life. Yeah. Wow. Why is everything spherical and curvy in the universe? <sighs> spherical and curvy. <sighs> I wrote a whole essay on this. Did you? Called On Being Round. Nice. <laughs> Multiple laws of physics conspire to make things round when you might want them some other shape. Mm -hmm. And that goes for soap bubbles. It goes for forming planets. Right. It goes for forming stars. So the laws of physics conspire to make this happen, and that essay is an entire exposition on that. And you can just Google. Dude, you are such a tease, because you did I, not I tell this guy there. why. I think it's there. I think you can get the essay without having to buy the book. Okay. Just Google Mike. Oh, Neil deGrasse Google Tyson. Google deGrasse, just that takes out Mike Tyson in okay. case he wrote anything. That's right. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. First of all, I'm just saying this. So Google deGrasse and On Being Round, and that should go straight to it. I, I have a book called On Being on the Ground. <laughs> It's where I bite your ear off and I knock you out. It's on being on the ground. Okay, anyway. <laughs> we create simulations right now to tell us about the weather and what it's going to do. Oh, interesting. That's exactly what we do. Yes. And we do that based on, it, it, I say it, it, we like, I'm a scientist. <laughs> oh, yeah, look, look, look at me. I love the way. <laughs> That's I'm good. out with you guys Keep going. Long. Keep going. <laughs> Keep, I'm loving it. Keep going. <laughs> But, so, so, so they're called climate models. Exactly. Is what they're called. And those models are made, uh, the, mm -hmm. way that, the reason they know they work is because they're made uh, and tested on data on that's actual, already happened. Yeah, that's correct. So it's so cool. Like yeah. you, you know. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right. You want evidence when we don't really know what's going on? Right. When they say 50% chance of rain. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. pretty funny, man. That, that is the best evidence when that model does Flip not work. Coin. Right. It does not that's, work. That's fine. Okay. We got nothing is really what they're saying. Okay, so in That's the future, you want weather forecast to be 100% of this or 0% of that. Right. Then you know you've got the right model. That's true, because you're really just covering your ass. You are C that is all you are doing. freaking A. 50 is, oh my God. Yes. You, you dirty didn't little weatherman. You didn't know this? You dirty, cheating weatherman. Every man. time they give a statistic, they cover in their ass. 50% chance of rain. That just means we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yep. 